Hey guys, Sean from Note Cycles. Are you looking for an audio upgrade for your 2014 and up Harley Davidson Road Glide or Street Glide? Today, we have the perfect package for you. Today, we're gonna to be installing Rockford Falls Gate's new head unit for the 2014 and up Harley-Davidson motorcycles, the PMX HD14, as well as Rockford Fosgate's Stage 2 6.5 inch front fairing kit with amplifier. The front 6.5 inch speakers are the TMS65, and the four channel amplifier is the M5800X4, which is an 800 watt four channel amplifier. Before we begin with the disassembly of our bike, let's go over what we're gonna install today. First is Rockford Fosgate's newest addition to their Harley-Davidson lineup, the PMX HD14. It is a true drop-in radio with Apple CarPlay, USB, three RCA pre-outs for your amplifier. Next are the Rockford Fosgate TMS 65s, six and a half inch speakers. We'll be putting them in our front fairing. They come with all necessary hardware and equipment including speaker grills for your street glide or speaker grills for your road glide. The amplifier we're using today is the Rockford Fosgate M5800X4, which is an 800 watt four channel amplifier. So it gives you plenty of room to expand in the future as well. The amplifier comes already ready to go. The amplifier is also equipped with Rockford Fosgate's preset amplifier settings but you also have the ability to set your own level and gate adjustments to your liking. And today we'll be using Rockford Fosgate's amplifier installation kit, the RFK HD 14 M5, which will give you all the rest of your necessary equipment, including plug and play harnesses, power and ground wire, fusing, your amp bracket, and all of your screws, bolts, and necessary hardware. Now that we've gone over what we're going to install, let's get to the disassembly of our 2016 Harley-Davidson Street Glide. Before we begin the disassembly of the bike, let's take a moment to protect anything that could get damaged during the installation. In our case, we're going to cover up the fender with a blanket or a, a, a fender cover. Now that that's taken care of, we're going to go ahead and start removing the bolts for the windshield, there are three of them up top. They are a T27, so let's grab our T27 and start removing those bolts. And as a suggestion, I would leave the middle one in until we're completely done and ready to remove the front fairing. Now that we've removed our two outside bolts and loosened our middle bolt, you can gently remove your windscreen. Next, we'll be removing the four T27 bolts from the inside of the fairing. There's one just below the mirror. And if you follow down the bottom to the bottom of the fairing, just above where your turn signal is, is the second one. It is the same on both sides. So now we can go ahead and start removing those. Once you remove the bolts, you'll notice that there are two different sizes. Just remember, long on the top. And now you can go ahead and remove the two T27 bolts on the clutch side of your front fairing. Now that we've removed the inner fairing bolts, we can move to the outer part of the fairing. Hold on, remove the center windshield and slowly release. Now you'll have to remember your headlight is ha your headlight does have a connector just lift and pop to remove now that we have our outer fairing off let's go ahead and remove the two bolts from the fresh air vent they are here and here and they are a t25 so let's go ahead and get those off Once those two T25 bolts are removed, you just slide it back and remove. 
So now with the fresh air vent removed, we have access to the top of the radio. There are gonna be some pop clips that you're gonna to need to remove. They are here, here, and here. So to remove the clips, you're gonna insert your panel tool in between the plastic plug and the metal of the bike and just gently pop. Now that those are out of the way, we can begin by removing some of the plugs onto our factory Harley-Davidson radio. So on the GPS antenna, there's a small tab to pop it off. So our AM-FM antenna, small tab on the bottom of the plug and release. And then we will have our factory USB that releases on the top of the unit unplug and then to release the factory connector there is a pin on the middle of the plug you will push in and then pull the latch towards you to release once you have the radio disconnected if you have the factory gps or factory am fm powered antenna you can go ahead and remove those off Don't forget to unclip your powered antenna. There's a small pin at the top. Now that we've removed everything off the top of the bracket, we're gonna remove the bolts holding the upper tray to the radio and to the rest of the fairing in the speaker pods. There are four on top of the tray. They are T25. So let's get those out now. Now that we've removed the four bolts from the top, we're going to remove the seven bolts holding the rest of the top plate on. Four T25s that attach the top bracket to each speaker pod. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we've removed those seven bolts, you can gently pull out the top plate and set aside for later. Now that the top plate's off, we're gonna remove one T25 from the gauge cluster and disconnect the plugs for the gauges and set them down lower so they're out of our way. So first we'll remove two pop clips from the gauge cluster, one on either side and just gently get behind and pull out. Gently get behind, pull out. So next we'll remove the three plugs from the gauge cluster. Remember they are plastic, so be gentle. So just gently lift up and pull the plug backwards. On both outside plugs, the middle plug you'll release two clips on either side, gently Pull out to remove. Now that the plugs are out of the way, we can remove the T25 from the center of the gauges. Now that we have our gauge cluster out, we'll just remove one more Christmas tree plug out of our way. So now it's time to remove the radio. We're gonna use a 3 16th Allen to remove four bolts, one on each corner. Now that the four bolts are out of the radio, you have to lift up and then backwards to clear the bracket. Now it's time to install the Rockford Fosgate PMX HD14 into the bike. Now when you purchase from Note Cycles, we will already have put on the appropriate trim ring for your Harley Davidson Street Glide or Road Glide. Remember the way it came out where we lift it up and then pulled out? Now it's just opposite. 
drop in and push in till the four bolts line up. And now you'll go ahead and tighten those down. We'll be using our 3 16 Allen to tighten down the four factory bolts. Now that all four bolts are in and snug, we're going to go ahead and finish torquing them down with a ratchet. After the bolts are tightened, we can go ahead and plug in our factory connector. You're going to insert it and push the lever back to you hear an audible click. The Rockford unit does not use the factory USB, so we'll be installing that into our pocket. Now, the best way to deinstall the factory USB is to gently push in on the rubber until you release it. And then push it forward till it releases and pull through the factory pocket. So now that we've removed the factory USB plug, we can install the new provided USB plug from the PMX HD14. It'll use all the factory holes and go to the same spot and has included a grommet. So now we're going to install into the factory hole, push through till the grommet goes in, push that in till it seats. After that's completed, you can take your AM FM antenna, plug that in. Don't forget if you have a power antenna, you don't want to plug your power antenna back in. If you're only installing the head unit, now is a good time to go ahead and test all functions, make sure your speakers work. And then after you've confirmed everything works, you can go ahead and skip to the end of the video where we reassemble the bike. So now let's continue on with the installation of our front fairing speakers, the TMS 65 and our four channel 800 watt amplifier, the M5 800 X4. Now I have removed the radio for ease of installation of the other parts. So first, I'm going to remove two Phillips head plug screws to remove this. And that's only because I can't get my hands in there to remove the three bolts holding the bottom part of the speaker pod to the fairing of the bike. As you'll see, the two Phillips head screws on either edge, and you'll remove those and slide the screw and the pin out together and just make sure you keep those together because we'll be reinstalling those on the back side. Once those are removed, we'll re remove one pin plug and slide the unit forward and out of the way. And then you'll be able to see the three bolts that are holding on the bottom of the speaker pod. Take a 7 16th socket and remove the three bolts, and that's both sides. Once we remove the three bolts from either speaker pod, we're going to go ahead and release two more clips off of the speaker pod. Don't forget to remove the plug for the power outlet by just pulling on it and pulling it out. Once everything is removed from the speaker pod, we have three more bolts. They're 3 8 Allen here, here, and inside here. Just be careful, once you take those out, the speaker pod will be completely loose and you'll be able to remove it. So let's begin and remove the 3 8 Allen head bolts on the speaker pod. Now the third one is inside the little cubby here.
once all th three three eighths Allen bolts are out, you can disconnect your speaker plug and remove from the motorcycle itself. Don't forget to disconnect the speaker wire and remove from the bike. Next, we're gonna remove the factory speaker grills with a T25. There's three bolts holding them in. So let's go ahead and remove those now. Rockford Fosgate labeled each grill so you know where to put it. Left clutch, right brake. So let's go ahead and get those put in. Just remember you're using the factory screws and you're screwing back into plastic. So no need to over tighten. So now we're over at the bench. It's time to remove the factory Harley Davidson speakers out and put in our brand new TMS 65 speakers from Rockford Fosgate. What you're going to need to do is grab your T25 and remove four screws on the speaker. So now that all four screws are out, we can gently remove the speaker and unplug them from the factory plugs by just grabbing the bottom of the speaker plug and wiggling. Set them aside. Now it's time to install our Rockford Fosgate TMS 65s into our factory speaker pods. You'll notice inside our speaker pod there are two speaker wire colors, one pink, one pink with black. The pink is our positive, which will go to the positive or the plus sign of our new Rockford Fosgate speaker, and pink with black is our negative, that will go to the negative of our Rockford Fosgate speaker. In some cases you may have to crimp your black wire or your negative wire down. Just take a pair of needle nose pliers and gently apply a little bit of pressure to the top of it. Try plugging it in. You want to be able to not easily wiggle it off. So once the speaker's in the pod, you'll notice that the screw holes line up directly with the factory screw holes. So you can go ahead and get those started by hand And we'll move over to the other speaker pod. Now let's go ahead and tighten them all the way down with our T25. Again, you're screwing in the plastic, so just be careful that you don't over tighten and strip the speaker pod. Now that both new speakers are in the pods, we can go ahead, reinstall them into the bike. And gently place it in and hand start a couple of the bolts to help hold it. And then we're going to go ahead and put in the bolts on the bottom. Now that the three bottom bolts are in and two of the upper bolts are in, we can go ahead and get the last one using our 3 16 Allen. And again, just snug them up because you're plastic to plastic. You don't want to break through. And then we'll move over, tighten up the bottom bolts. 
So again, we'll be using a 7 16 socket. You can use an open-ended wrench or a ratcheting wrench, however you feel more comfortable or whatever tool you have. Once those six bolts are tight, you can go ahead and plug in your speaker wire again and get your power outlet plugged back in. Don't forget to plug all the Christmas trees back in. And it's gonna be the same process for the other side. Gently place in. Get some of your upper bolts hang in so it stays. Take your 3 16 Allen and just take them just a hair. And we'll get our bolts in the bottom. Now we can start tightening all the way. Once all six bolts are tight, we can go ahead and put back in our plastic cover plate. Along with our pop-in pins. And making sure we put back all plugs that we undid. And of course, plugging in our speaker. Now that both speaker pods are secured to the bike, we can go ahead and put in our Rockford Fosgate PMX HD14. Once the radio is in and secured, we're going to go ahead and take our gauges and get those back installed. Placing. And just slightly tighten the bolt so it holds it in. And then we're going to go ahead and get the top plate mounted back into the motorcycle. Once we have our top plate located where we want it, we can go ahead and start putting the bolts back in. I like to start with the back two. And then you can go ahead and tighten the one up into the gauge. And so I don't forget it, I like to put the one into the pocket next. And then next we'll do the four on the outside that go into the speaker pod. Once you get them started, go ahead and get them all tightened up. Once they're all tight, now we can move on to installing the amplifier base plate and the amplifier itself. So the Rockford Fosgate Stage 2 kit comes with everything you need. Your six and a half inch front speakers, the TMS-65, your four channel 800 watt amplifier, the M5-800X4, as well as the RFK HD 14 M5. Now this will come, this is the amplifier plate. This is what will now attach to your top plate and into the 
the new Rockford Fosgate PMX HD 14 and hold it all together. It'll tell you where to mount exactly for your 14 plus street glide. So let's go ahead and get that mounted now. Included in the Rockford Fosgate amplifier kit are all the necessary items to mount your amp plate. You're gonna be using the beveled edge threaded bolts. Now when bolting the amp plate down, you wanna make sure that you can clearly see all four holes going to the top plate. Once you have your amplifier plate mounted, it's time to go ahead and mount the amplifier. Now we've already swapped out the original power and speaker plug with the 90 degree plug because we knew that we have a little bit of trouble getting up past this. So we did it already, but it comes with that 90 degree plug ready to go if needed. So provided in the amplifier kit are four 2.5 millimeter pan head. They're very small, so be careful not to drop them. And they will go directly threaded into the amp rack. So we removed the factory plug and we'll replace it with our new T-harness plug once we get the radio wired back in. Now that our amplifier is mounted, we can go ahead and use our T-harness to plug in the radio to the amplifier and the amplifier to the speakers. So we'll take our factory, plug in, swing that back, make sure you hear that click, and take the new Rockford T-harness, plugging it in, swinging it towards the front of the bike, listening for that click. Now the T-harness will have a couple of wires coming out of it. You have your amp input on this side, and your front and rear output on this side. So what we're going to do is plug in our front and rear input on the side with the gains and adjustments. And then our output will go on the same side as the power wire. So let's get those plugged in. So our plug on the front of the amplifier is your front speaker wires, which are the white, white, black, gray, gray, black. And you're going to want to hear a click. And then the plug towards the rear of the amplifier, that's going to be your rear speakers, which right now we will not be using because we're only doing front speakers. But that will be the green, green, black, purple, purple, black. Now that we have our input plugged into the amplifier, it's time to go ahead and plug in the output side. So again, white, gray, white, black, gray, black is front. and green, purple, green, black, purple, black is rear. Now if that's plugged in, we can go ahead and start disassembling the gas tank and the seat to run our power and ground wire. So now it's time that we remove our seat and our gas tank to run the power wire. Your seat may be a little different than this, but they all come off relatively similarly. Now that we've removed our seat, we need to remove four half inch bolts from the gas tank, as well as the fuel line from the bottom of the gas tank. 
So let's start with the, the half inch bolts underneath the seat. Now that those two are out, we'll move to the front. You have to remove a small black plastic cover just by lifting up on it and pushing forward. You can release that. And same, same half inch socket. Now that the four bolts are out of the gas tank, we want to just remove the venting tubes as well as the single plug that goes up the gas tank. Now that that's out and done, we need to disconnect the fuel line going to the motor. Now it's best practice when disconnecting the gas tank to have a towel or rag ready for any potential drippage. So the easiest way to do it is push up on the collar while pushing down or pulling down on the actual fuel line. Once your fuel line is disconnected, just pick up and remove the gas tank to put in a nice safe space. Now that our gas tank's removed, we can start removing the rubber pops on the wire cover chase so we can start our power run. So inside your Rockford Fosgate RFK HD 14 M5 power wire kit will come a pre-terminated section of power wire and ground wire and it will even have the power end for the M5 800X4 800 watt amplifier already on it. So we're going to get that run. You're going to follow the factory harness on the left hand side come straight up through and you can get it plugged directly in to your amplifier making sure we have battery plus with the red wire G or ground with the black wire and REM or remote to the blue wire So at this time, you can also plug in your remote wire. The remote wire will be from your amplifier plug. And then the other side will come from your T harness that we plugged in previously to the radio. And say, just lock, hear a click. So once you have that all plugged in, you can go ahead and start running your wire down, wire tying periodically with the wire ties that are provided in the amplifier kit. Once your power wire is run, it's time to remove the ECM, get that out of the way so we can access the factory battery. So that is a half inch. 
just like the gas tank was. Once those bolts are out, you'll want to grab your panel popper and remove the two plugs from the top of the ECM. Once we've removed the ECM from the top of the battery, we can then route our power and ground wires to the battery. Your ground wire, at least on this bike, is on the right-hand side, positive is on the left-hand side. Removing the screw from the battery with a Phillips head screwdriver. And same Phillips head screwdriver for the power wire. The power wire kit will come pre-installed with a 60 amp fuse already inside. Once power and ground is onto the battery, we can go ahead and put our ECM cover back on top. We're gonna put our plugs that we removed earlier back in their original. They're actually labeled black and gray for which way they should go. Now that the ECM cover is on tight, we can go ahead and cut, put the cover back on our chase. Next, we're gonna go ahead, get the gas tank back on and bolted in. Two bolts in the bottom, get them started by hand. Two bolts on either side, get those started by hand. Don't forget to rerun your fuel tank vents. and also plug in your gray connector from your fuel tank. Now we can tighten the four half inch bolts up. And then the two up front. Last thing on the gas tank is putting the fuel line back on by lifting up, pushing in, and it will automatically drop back on.
Now that the gas tank is 100% back on, we can go ahead and put our seat back on. Now, before we put the bike completely back together, let's take a quick listen and make sure everything sounds as it should. Now to test the audio system, I'm just gonna grab my USB and my phone, get it plugged in, see what she sounds like. Sounds pretty good. Now we can go to the front of the bike, check out the amp controls, see if we need to adjust any of the gains or crossovers. And we're gonna see about the preset, see if we wanna turn that, leave that on or turn that off. So to do that, we're gonna remove the four three millimeter hex bolts in the cover of the amplifier and lift up. Right now, from the factory, it comes with the preset on. The gain is turned all the way down, as well as the crossovers are turned all the way down. It is in four channel mode. We're gonna leave it in four channel mode because we will eventually be adding on rear speakers. So for now, we're gonna turn the preset off. We're gonna turn our gain about to 11 o'clock. Leave our punch EQ alone for now and turn our frequency to about 80 hertz, making sure we're on high pass. So that is blocking anything below 80 hertz, which is sub bass. And we're going give to give it a listen. Now I think I'm going to give it just a hair more gain, just to get a little bit more volume out of it. Go to just shy of 12 o'clock, try it again. Now I'm pretty happy with that. So one thing you want to be cautious of is having your gain too high. So um, as you're adjusting it, you'll notice two lights on the top of the amplifier. If they're flashing red, that means you're too high for your volume. Turn your volume down and adjust accordingly. Now remember, you can always add a little bit of bass and a little bit of treble through your head unit. Now that we're done tuning it, we can go ahead and put our cover back on and lock that back down with a three millimeter Allen. Now that that's all done, we're going to spend a couple minutes just cleaning up wires and getting everything and making sure everything is plugged back in, starting with your gauges. So we're going to go ahead Get all of our gauges plugged back in. Make sure you listen for that click. And then put plug all your Christmas trees back in. As 
So now that our amplifier is done and in, we can spend a couple minutes getting some of the extra wires out of the way and wire tying them up. Now you want to always be cautious that nothing is sitting directly in front of the headlight when you put your front fairing back on. So let's get some of these wires out of the way. Now your, your bike may be different, but the idea is the same. You want to make sure that stuff is wire tied and not going to come loose after you uh, start riding. Now that we got our wires out of the way, we can check, get our antenna back on and plugged in. Making sure we plug the power back in. So now that we got everything wire tied, we're gonna, we can go ahead and put in our fresh air vent held in by two T27 bolts. Now if those two are in, we can go ahead and grab our front fairing, get our headlight plugged in, and start mounting that. So first thing we're going to do is plug in our headlight. Gently place the fairing on and put that middle bolt for the windshield in to keep it in place. Now you remember in disassembly, there was a long and a short. Again, the long bolt goes up top. We'll get that in and get that started by hand. And we'll go ahead and get the bottom one started by hand. And then the same thing on the other side. And then before we tighten anything, we'll get our windshield in. So now we'll go ahead and tighten them all down. Starting with the top. Then moving to the bottom. Then the other side. Top first. Then moving to the bottom. Then we'll tighten, tighten our bolts on the front of the windshield and the front of the fairing. So let's take a look at some of the functions of our Rockford Fosgate PMX HD14. So the initial startup, pretty cool. So we have our home button, equalizer button, information button, and a power button. So if we hit home and music, we have our main source screen, which is Bluetooth, USB, FM, auxiliary, weather band, AM, and party mode. Party mode is where you and a couple of your buddies who all have this, all have this same radio can actually link together and listen to the same music at the same time. Kind of cool. So let's give the Apple CarPlay a try. So, so now that we're plugged into Apple CarPlay, you have everything right on your screen. You have your phone, your Apple Music, 
your Apple Maps, your messages, uh, you have some of the little or th smaller things like your podcasts, your news and audio books, but you also have the ability to have Spotify, Amazon Music, Pandora, Tidal, Sirius XM app. And as far as maps, you have Google Maps, Apple Maps, and Waze. Now we can go into the EQ functions. You have your fader and balance, which allows you to move the music around the bike. We only have two front speakers right now. Your equalizer. So this is on basic. You can give yourself a little bass, a little treble, or it has some presets that you can put in and it will adjust it automatically for you. That city, garage, custom, you can do it on your own. And basic will just give you bass and treble. Hit that back button. Your crossover settings, you can adjust the crossovers inside the head unit to block certain frequencies. Subwoofer control. So when you add your bag subs, you can adjust those up and down right from the head unit. You have the ability to do adjust your source level. So where if your FM is much louder than everything else, you can bring it down. And you have a kit selection inside here where you can set it to have fairing speakers only, fairing and fairing and bag lids. Fairing bag lids and subwoofer, fairing and tour pack, fairing tour pack and bag lids, or just a flat tune. And that's all already built inside that head unit. As you can see, the Rockford head unit is packed with technology. Along with the speakers and the new 800 watt amplifier, this thing is ready to jam. To pick up any of the items you saw installed on our bike today, head to notecycles.com. And as always, have a blast out there.